is going on, guys? JD from New York here, and this is WWE Off The Script, episode number 54, part number one, for your week ending March 1st, 2015. Thank you so much for joining me this weekend to start your weekend off the right way, man. Off The Script, without question, scorching hot. Thank you guys so much for all your love and support. Let's continue that this weekend, man. We are only four weeks away from WrestleMania 31. And I got a ton of news for you guys this weekend, man. It's been a fucking crazy week in WWE with Brock Lesnar, which I will talk about as the main story right here on part one. The rumored Roman Reigns drug testing and his failure putting the WrestleMania 31 main event with Brock Lesnar for the championship in jeopardy. I got news on all that, plus so much more right here on part one. This is without question the number one source for all WWE news and rumors right here on YouTube.com. So if you guys are not subscribed, I don't know what the fuck you guys are waiting for. Honestly, this is the number one source right here on YouTube.com, not only for WWE, but for 2K15 video game content as well. If you guys are not following me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. And every other link to my social media right there on the layout for WWE Off The Script. But enough of that, guys. Let's get right into it. We're going to start off with the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. All right. Brock Lesnar's name has been tossed around many, many, many times this week. So has Roman Reigns, and I want to get this out of the way before I even begin to talk about Brock Lesnar. Roman Reigns, there was a story on Reddit, and someone had leaked this story claiming to be a verified, and I use that term loosely, verified WWE insider. If nobody believed who he was, if nobody believed the story, they could personally DM him through Reddit. And he would reveal himself uh, to those people who are curious to know who he is. Or the moderators on the Reddit page. The Squared Circle Reddit page that talks about wrestling, uh, Ring of Honor, TNA, WWE, etc, etc. Alright? One of you guys actually came to me via Twitter with this story. In the early hours before I was even awake, I woke up to it. Alright? You guys were all over it around 11 a.m. Okay? The other day. And I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I actually posted to uh, Twitter for you guys to be aware of what is going on and what is being said. Roman Reigns failing a drug test caused Brock Lesnar to walk out on Monday Night Raw and leave the arena. Okay? He left Nashville. He went home. And that was that. Okay? That was the story going around. I knew this story was going to be a big one. Okay, if it was true. I didn't come on here immediately and fucking start praising this verified insider. I didn't come on here and report something that wasn't true or that wasn't confirmed. I would never do that. I would always wait to see what happens with the story. I would wait for it to develop. I would wait to hear from one of my credible sources that I usually go to when things happen like this, okay? It was immediately debunked. This entire story with Roman Reigns and the failing of the drug test and Brock Lesnar walking out of Monday Night Raw and leaving the arena because he was upset that Vince McMahon was going to overlook this and he was not going to suspend Roman Reigns. Blah, blah, blah. It was all debunked, okay? And this is the official statement. WWE officially pegged its main event for WrestleMania this past Sunday as Roman Reigns defeated Daniel Bryan to cement his status as challenger for Brock Lesnar's WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 31, okay? But a rumor, like I just previously mentioned, circulated late Tuesday night on Reddit that put Reigns' credibility at a serious risk. After word got out Lesnar had walked away from Monday Night Raw this past week, a rumor began to spread. It was over an alleged drug test failure on Reigns' behalf. The rumor noted Vince McMahon did not want to suspend Reigns because of his WrestleMania main event status, which upset Lesnar and caused him to walk out. 
in an update, PW Insider said that the story is absolutely 100% untrue. And he received a statement from WWE effectively shooting down this massive rumor that was circulating on Tuesday. The statement read as follows. With that, it appears Lesnar leaving Raw had to do with other factors as rumored, which I will talk about in just a few minutes. Some believe it may have been a result of finances and nothing to do with WWE creative. His contract will expire just after WrestleMania, and it's already known there is a major bidding war in place for Brock Lesnar's services. It is said that both Bellator and UFC have already or will reach out to Lesnar about making a return to MMA, while WWE would love to keep him on their roster, okay? That's that. All the Roman Reigns bullshit that you guys heard, squash it. It's not true. Imagine if it was true. I want you guys to think about that. If it was true and it did come down to that, how would you feel that Vince McMahon would just overlook it and turn the other cheek on Roman Reigns and just let him continue to be in the main event even though he failed the drug test? What would happen then? What would you think of Vince McMahon then? What would you think of the WWE then? I am going to be completely honest with each and every one of you guys watching me. You guys tend to take my dislike for Roman Reigns. You guys think I don't like him personally. I've said it two weeks in a row now that he has slowly gotten better, okay? He has visibly gotten better. But it's hard for me to sit in front of this microphone and this camera and record this video for you guys and say that I was hoping it was not true, okay? I wanted it to be true. I really did. Reason why I wanted it to be true is because things like this cause the entire community to be opinionated. And I would love to hear people's opinions on what would really go down if Vince McMahon turned the other cheek and let Roman Reigns be in the main event even if he did pass, or fail rather, fail a drug test. I don't know what would happen. I think the entire professional wrestling world would be turned upside down. I, I, I would have loved to see this be true because I would love to see Vince McMahon put in that position, that political power, you know, forcing his hand to make the right decision during WrestleMania season. Do you keep Reigns in the main event or do you suspend him? Obviously, if you're a publicly traded company, things would have to be right. And you need to do the right thing. This is why I wanted it to be true. Okay. You know, and the report goes on to say that Brock Lesnar has requested Daniel Bryan amidst this drug test failure on Roman Reigns' uh, behalf. You know, I didn't immediately believe this story. I knew you were going to have to tread lightly with this story. A lot of people initially turned it down immediately. I wanted to wait till it picked up steam. It was picked up by every major news source that I'm subscribed to and eventually it was debunked okay but as far as you guys let me know what you think of this outlandish story that leaked via reddit from a verified insider about roman reigns what would you have thought if this was true and vince mcmahon did indeed say you know what fuck it i'm gonna still allow him to compete in wrestlemania and win the wwe championship even though he failed a drug test. What would that mean for the rest of the roster? What would that do to the morale of everyone else who has failed the drug test and immediately was suspended 30 days? It's uh, it's nice to think about, man. It starts conversation. I want you guys to start conversa a conversation down in the comments below. All right, but that is debunked. Moving on to Brock Lesnar. Now, the real reason why Brock Lesnar walked out of Monday Night Raw, left the arena, and walked out on the WWE. Okay, it was not for the reasons I just previously mentioned. But, I have the full info on Brock Lesnar, alright? Brock Lesnar, whose contract with World Wrestling Entertainment has less than five weeks left to go. And he walked out of the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville without appearing as scripted and advertised on Monday's Raw television show. Sources close to the situation have said Lesnar and WWE CEO Vince McMahon reached an impasse 
regarding terms of a new contract, and neither would budge. The issue was described as resolvable, but not yet resolved. McMahon was attempting to sign Lesnar prior to his deal expiring, where on the free agent market, he could play WWE, UFC, and Bellator against each other. The company sent out a Twitter message as well as put on its website and had a commercial air during the USA Network all less than 20 minutes before the live show, promoting Lesnar's appearance. But as the show went on, there was no sign of him and the announcers never said anything indicating he would or wouldn't be there. Exactly what his future status is with WWE right now is unknown. The night before, after his UFC fight, uh, main event win, Frank Mir brought up Lesnar and talked about wanting to face him one more time and knowing he needed to beat Antonio Silva that night to keep that possibility alive. Lesnar has four scheduled appearances left before his contract expires. Television appearances on March 9th in Pittsburgh, March 23rd in Los Angeles, March 30th in San Jose, as well as headlining WrestleMania on March 29th at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. Lesnar faces Roman Reigns, all right, at WrestleMania 31, and in a championship match that he is expected to lose. McMahon is hoping to make Reigns, the company's signature star, a role long held by John Cena that had been historically held by Hulk Hogan, Steve Austin, and Dwayne Johnson through beating Lesnar on a show that is sold approximately, as of this very recording, 50,000 tickets. Due to Lesnar's aura of legitimacy, based on both winning an NCAA and UFC heavyweight championship, he would be the best person for Roman Reigns to beat, to be elevated to that level, such as Hogan, Austin, and The Rock. The company has had this direction planned out for approximately one year. Lesnar's issues with McMahon were said to be purely business and revolving around the New Deal and not regarding creative or his current contract. He is expected to appear for his remaining dates by those in the company because of the belief that missing them would constitute a contractual breach that could lead to legal action. The second Lesnar vs. Mir fight for the UFC heavyweight title in 2009 was the most successful non-boxing pay-per-view in history, drawing 1.6 million buys. Lesnar was UFC's most successful pay-per-view drawing card from 2008 to 2010, and many would argue, ever. He retired from MMA in 2011 after a loss to Aleister Overeem and returned to WWE in 2012, where he has been one of the entertainment company's biggest stars. Those close to Lesnar have claimed that he would never be, or was never, 100% during his UFC reign due to suffering um, divert occultitis. I don't know how to pronounce that, that fucking disease he had, but the intestinal disease, okay? which nearly killed him in late 2009. His doctor stated that he had not been healthy virtually his entire UFC run because of this disease. But as an inexperienced fighter, due largely to his size and wrestling ability, he did capture the UFC title and retained it twice before losing to Kane Velasquez. It was always said that Lesnar was interested in returning to UFC when his current deal expires with WWE with the claim that he's now healthy and felt he had unfinished business. But Lesnar turns 38 this summer and would have been out of the sport more than three years if he were to return. The age and because the odds are strong he would have more longevity as a pro wrestler than a fighter seemed in favor of his signing a new pro wrestling deal. It was also thought that the WWE's business being that they lost so much due to the start of the WWE Network with the company doing extensive layoffs and cost cutting that they wouldn't be able to afford Lesnar's high dollar deal for minimal dates. But the network subscription uh, increased significantly in January, which has made a substantial economic difference in WWE. In addition, after CM Punk signed with UFC, WWE has publicly traded uh, often a publicly traded company often compared with UFC would not want to lose another of its signature stars to the same organization 
in the same year. Now, now, I heard rumors, I don't know if this was true or not, that Brock Lesnar and Vince McMahon were arguing over the fact that Lesnar wanted to compete for both WWE by being its signature star as well as fighting for UFC. Now, this is a this is a gray area where I know Vince McMahon is not going to get into and I can understand why, okay? Number one, if you do allow Brock Lesnar to compete in WWE, hold your championship and be a signature star, a monster star in the company, and then have him do whatever he wants and fight in UFC, that could mean major money for WWE, okay? Because if Brock Lesnar is getting out there in the UFC and he is successful and he's beating guys left and right and he captures the UFC championship once again, which I, I think is very unlikely being that Cain Velasquez looks completely unbeatable. Um, I, I, I don't think that would be a bad move on Vince McMahon's part because you get, you get the WWE name out there. You get your superstar out there who is legitimately the biggest name in your company right now just based off who he is, and you get all that press, all that mainstream publicity, the media. Imagine the media that will come along with that. Brock Lesnar holding the UFC and the WWE Championship at the same time. You know, I, I don't think, we're living in a fucking fantasy world where, where this is happening, people. I, I don't think that would ever, ever, ever happen. But I'm going to go along Vince McMahon's side on this. I would not want my superstar to compete in UFC. Uh, if he's going to play a major part in my company, okay? Reason being is because the risk of injury is far greater than anything Brock Lesnar will do in a WWE ring. He could break an arm, he could break a leg, he can have a concussion, and then that would just ruin everything uh, that would uh, happen with Brock Lesnar. And, you know, the contract would be all fucked up, and, you know, he would be missing dates, he wouldn't be able to compete, they'd be paying him all this money guaranteed, it would just become a sticky situation. So I honestly think that Lesnar is being a little bit unfair here with the with the point, if this is true or not, that he wants to wrestle for both WWE and UFC. I don't know if this is true or not. Take that with a grain of salt. I read that somewhere, but I don't think Lesnar should really boil the entire contractual status down to that. You want to you you, you want to do one or the other. If you want to go to UFC and take care of some unfinished business, then by all means, do what you want to do. If you want to have a long, uh, a longer career and extend your professional fighting career, stay with WWE, man. He's making a boatload of money. He's not really doing anything. He's the company's champion right now. He he is the man, okay. And it, it, it would throw WrestleMania into a tailspin because if Brock Lesnar is signed, and we all know that he's signed or re-signed with the WWE, the likelihood of the main event for WrestleMania being unpredictable increases and that's what we want because right now going into Wrestlemania we all know Brock Lesnar is going to drop the title to Roman Reigns and what kind of intrigue is that for a championship match this is again why I would have preferred the triple threat match it would have made things a little bit more interesting a little bit more unpredictable but now being that it's back to a singles match with Reigns and Lesnar it becomes all too predictable and we know Reigns is going to be the guy to take the belt and WWE is going to put him over and have him beat Brock Lesnar if Lesnar resigns with the WWE, immediately this match becomes unpredictable because why would you even take the belt off Brock Lesnar if he resigns with the company? I don't know. I mean, you could do a lot more with Brock Lesnar as champion than have Roman Reigns have a stale and boring WWE championship run. He can always beat Brock Lesnar later in the year, but if you're going to go into WrestleMania and you're going to resign Brock Lesnar, obviously you're going to have major plans for him. You know, you're not going to just give Brock Lesnar all this money. You're not going to give Brock Lesnar this contract to come back to your company if you don't have plans in place for him. So why would you want him him to drop the belt regardless if he's resigned with the company? That's what I don't get. But this is the latest on Brock Lesnar, okay? It was done all because of business reasons. And I want you guys to understand that. This Rain story with the drug test, forget it. Brock Lesnar walked out of Monday Night Raw because of what happened with Vince McMahon. It was all over money. And I believe he was unhappy with the way they're merchandising him as a WWE superstar. It's all over money, all over contract. If I was Vince McMahon, 
these talks about signing Brock Lesnar and re-signing him to a deal would have been done around SummerSlam when they gave him the WWE Championship. That would have been done right then and there, man, during the summer. If you knew you wanted to keep Lesnar, this should have been a main priority and you should have got it done immediately. Now that you're waiting four weeks to go before WrestleMania, before he walks as a free agent, you're going to give him more freedom. You're going to give him more leeway in doing what he wants and getting more money out of you. You should have went to him and said, listen, this is what we want to offer you. We're going to keep you at the same rate. You're going to do what you've been doing and that's it. Keep him happy. Now Lesnar is going to be, the closer we get to WrestleMania, he's going to be, you know, thinking a little bit. Maybe I can squeeze out some more money out of Dana White. Maybe I could squeeze some more money out of Bellator. You know, let me see what WWE's got to. He's going to go around in circles until he gets the best deal. Now the ball is in Lesnar's court. And I think Vince McMahon uh, made this a little bit too late for Lesnar to re-sign with the WWE. He waited too long. So we're going to find out what's going on with that. I will definitely keep you guys updated on Brock Lesnar's contractual status with the WWE, but that is the latest information I got regarding this entire situation, all right? Speaking of SummerSlam, according to PWInsider.com, WWE SummerSlam 2015 will likely be held at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. As previously reported, WWE had a proverbial field day in trying to find a new home for the annual August pay-per-view event since New Jersey's IZOD Center announced that it would be closing its doors at the end of March. It was previously reported that SummerSlam would no longer be held at the IZOD Center and that WWE was searching for a new venue in New York City and New Jersey. The Prudential Center in New Jersey as well as the Barclays Center and City Field in New York were all looked at as replacements. However, it was recently reported that a Legends of Wrestling event will be held at City Field near the date of SummerSlam featuring WWE Hall of Famer's Ric Flair on the card for that specific event. WWE immediately had the advertisements featuring, featuring Flair's name, as well as other likenesses signed to WWE removed, since they currently own the rights to these names. With WWE being upset with City Field, going with this event as its first professional wrestling endeavor, it seems as if the company is going after the Barclays Center with more ferocity and wants SummerSlam to emanate from Brooklyn. WWE had previously reserved over 1,000 rooms at the Hilton Hotel near the IZOD Center in New Jersey. It's unsure if the Hilton will continue to be where WWE houses its talent during SummerSlam weekend or if they will lose business with the event moving to the Barclays Center. I know you guys asked me on Twitter. You guys came to me with this story. JD, are you going to SummerSlam if it does indeed come to Brooklyn? I don't know yet, man. There's not a specific time frame for when tickets go on sale. But if I do have the finances, I'm going to try. I'm not going to make any guarantees. It would be definitely awesome for my channel if I do a live review from the Barclays Center for WWE SummerSlam. But if I hear anything, again, regarding this situation uh, where WWE is going to confirm where it's going to have SummerSlam and when tickets are on sale, I will definitely let you guys know right here on Off The Script, all right? Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe, again, in the news this week. Right now, as of this writing, he is returning to Ring of Honor in March for the first time since 2008. As previously reported, Joe recently announced his departure from TNA Wrestling through his official Twitter account. After Joe announced that his tenure with TNA was over, fans wondered what was next for the former TNA and Ring of Honor champion. Stone Cold Steve Austin even said that WWE should look into picking up the muscle, busting Samoan. Reports say Triple H may have been interested. Ring of Honor released the following promo video, or a promo video, declaring that Joe was coming home. He will be appearing, appearing for the promotion on March 7th, 13, 14, and 27. But as of right now, Joe is negotiating with other outlets. New Japan, Ring of Honor, and he is negotiating with WWE. Where he ends up, we don't know. But as of right now, he will be doing independent dates for Ring of Honor. March 7th, 13, 14, and 27. I would hope he does WWE, but like I said when I talked about this on Off The Script, um, I know Joe is probably going to head right back down to the independents, make his money, and make a name for himself there. He is 35, 36 years old. 
I don't think Vince McMahon will treat Samoa Joe the way he should be treated. So I think it's best for Joe to stay in Ring of Honor, do New Japan, do the independent dates, make his own money, sell his merchandise. He will be just fine. If he wants one more run in WWE, I would not blame him as a fan of WWE. I would not, um, you know, be opposed to this. I think he would add a lot of credibility. I think he would add a great heel character to the WWE roster. But only time will tell. I think WWE should jump on this immediately and give Joe a spot in NXT for a couple of months and then bring him up to the main roster. So many great matches that we would see on WWE TV and pay-per-view if Joe was on the roster. But right now, like I said, he is returning to Ring of Honor for the first time since 2008. And finally, guys, we got news on the Intercontinental Championship. What's going on with the IC title? I mentioned this in my Monday Night Raw review. If you guys missed that, link is down below in the description. WWE doesn't seem to know what they're doing with the IC title. I brought up in my Monday Night Raw review that I think they should hold a tournament. You got four weeks till WrestleMania. More than enough time to set aside eight guys who you think are credible um, opponents for, for uh, Bad News Barrett. Get them in a tournament. The winner of this tournament fights Bad News Barrett at WrestleMania 31 for the Intercontinental Championship. It makes it all exciting. It makes it all important. Okay? Just a little bit. All right? But superstar tweets, ringside interviews, and rumors backstage have provided some insight into WWE's Intercontinental Championship plans at WrestleMania 31 on March 29th. As seen at Fastlane, Bad News Barrett technically retained the title in his match with Dean Ambrose. However, Ambrose stole the strap and is walking around like he is the rightful owner. The February 23rd edition of Monday Night Raw proved to be a confusing one in terms of the IC strap. Barrett faced Dolph Ziggler in a singles match, in which he lost during the match. R-Truth sat at ringside in order to provide commentary, proclaiming that he wants a shot at the IC title at WrestleMania. Ambrose made his way to the ring after Ziggler defeated Barrett. He didn't say anything, just raised the title in everyone's faces, prompting Ziggler to act like he wants a title shot. Heath Slater soon went on Twitter to say that he too wants a shot at the Intercontinental Championship. I don't know why Heath Slater and R-Truth are even being considered to be in the same sentence as the IC Championship. Just boggles my mind, man. Continuing on with this story. The question is, is there going to be a six-man Armageddon match at WrestleMania for the title? Perhaps. But there has been discussion backstage about how this match should play out. Some want an Intercontinental Championship tournament that will see the challenger face one another on WWE TV leading up to WrestleMania on March 29th. Others, however, have suggested that the company should put the IC strap on the line during the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which is still possible. If a slew of other mid-card superstars come forward wanting a title shot, chances are the company may be adding the championship to the trophy prize of the second annual Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. For the love of fucking God, no. I hate the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I think it was fucking awful last year. I don't know why this is on WrestleMania or if it's even in the fucking plans. I don't know why. I would do the tournament, number one, and if you want a multi-man match, put the NXT guys on WrestleMania and give them a fucking ladder match in vain to the Money in the Bank ladder match. But the winner of this gets a WWE main roster contract for Monday Night Raw. That's what I would do. Why do you have to have all these losers come forward and say, you know what, I want a shot at the title. I want this, I want that. Listen, let me tell you something. These guys may work all year round, okay? They may work every live event. They may do this, they may do that, etc., etc. But there is only a limited amount of space on WrestleMania's card. If I was booking WrestleMania, I would do it completely different than what WWE has done in the past. And what irks me is that WWE always tries to get everyone on the card simply for that WrestleMania payday. Not everyone has to be on the card, man. Really. An Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal honestly should be on the pre-show if you want to do that. All right? 
if you want the big boys to be on the main card for the four-hour televised show on the WWE Network, then book it accordingly. Make it important. The Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal is not important. This is a fucking lazy, ridiculous, bullshit way to get everyone on the card. And I'm fucking tired of this shit, man. Last year, it was awful. It was rushed. It was sloppy. Everyone in the ring at the same time. The match was over in fucking 10 minutes. It did nothing for Cesaro at all. What's the point of it? What is the point of it? And then you want to put the IC title on the line in a meaningless battle royal? Yeah. What a way to d- the fucking belittle the IC title. Who gives a fuck, man? Wade Barrett deserves better than that. Dean Ambrose deserves better than that. Dolph Ziggler deserves better than that, man. Book something with interest. Book something that's going to invest the fans into your mid-roster car, uh, your car guys, man. Come on. A tournament would be fabulous. And whoever the winner of, of that is, obviously we'll go on to WrestleMania fight Barrett. And then we can build to a Brian Ziggler. We can build to something else. It'll flesh out the card a lot better than just throwing everybody in a battle royal because, hey, we got nothing for them. We got no plans for them. We'll just put them in a fucking battle royal that nobody gives a shit about. Fucking irks the shit out of me, man. I hate it. I can't stand it. But that is WWE off the script. That is part one. Let me know what you guys think of all the top stories right here on part one, episode number 54. If you did indeed enjoy the video, please don't be afraid. Hit that like button. Show your support for off the script. If you're not following me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. If you're not subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for, man? Hit that subscribe button. WWE News and Rumors, number one source right here. WWE 2K15 com- uh, commentary and the best entertainment in video games right here on this channel, man. If you guys want more additional wrestling content, Joe Cronin Show. Link is down below to his Twitter and his YouTube page. And the guys over at Share Shot Reality. Can't forget that with those guys. Labar, Eisenberg, Ghoulish. Go check those guys out at WrestleZone.com. Their homepage and YouTube will be linked right down below. Episode number 54, part two. What do I got for you guys? AJ Lee versus Stephanie McMahon. Is it going to happen? And the state of the WWE Divas division, man, which is coming under fire the last three weeks. I got the full story, the latest information on AJ Lee calling out Stephanie McMahon on Twitter in regards to the state of the Divas division. And The Undertaker may be kept off television until WrestleMania 31, until he's staring Bray Wyatt directly in the eyes, man. Why? I got the full details on that as well. Do not miss Off The Script this weekend. It is going to be big, guys. Like I said, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up. And I will see you all on Saturday morning. Until then, this is JD, and I'll talk to you guys later.